What I have here is the Be The First Plus from Be Very Creative, a Portuguese 3D printer manufacturer. I recently teased this printer in one of my recent live streams and said that the Portuguese make some pretty delicious chicken, but what does this printer do to match up to my expectations? Watch to find out. Hello and welcome back to Makey's Muse. So to say Be Very Creative are going with a B theme with their branding would be somewhat of an understatement. The Be The First Plus is the plus version of the original Be The First, if that makes any sense. And possibly takes the cake for the most impressive packaging I've ever come across in a 3D printer. The closed cell foam is resilient and actually designed to be used for transporting the 3D printer, holding its tiny spools of filament, which also happen to be yellow, the tools and the machine itself, all carried with this collapsing carry handle. And it's called the B-Pack. <laughs> Looking at tech specs, it has a print volume of 190 by 135 by 125 millimeters in the Z direction and a non-heated polycarbonate build surface which attaches to the adjustable mount using magnets. Pretty cool. It runs 1.75 millimeter filament and without a heated platform, you'll only be printing PLA. In terms of design, the Be The First Plus has a really unique design and it's very attractive from an industrial design point of view with generous curves of white glossy plastic over a very rigid sheet metal chassis. It employs precision linear guides and overall feels really, really quite rigid. There's also no external wires, filament feed tubes or anything. The only IO you have is the power in which is a 24 volt 4 amp DC brick and USB in. No SD card slot, LCD or even an initialized button, you just have the mains power switch. It also retails for just under 1,500 euros which is around 1,600 US or once you get it into Australia around $2,680 Australian. Ouch! So at that price point, it's pretty clear that this 3D printer is not going to be competing with the likes of a Wenhao i3 anytime soon, but instead, Be Very Creative have focused on a robust construction, reliability, and ease of use. Consideration has also been made to put the extruder in a difficult to access location, which also makes it a nightmare to film the thing printing, but it's still an open frame design, so curious fingers may still be a problem. It's designed to use their tiny branded B Supplies filament rolls, which snap into place, using magnets as well. And these carry 330 grams of material and retail for 10 euros each. There's no way to use larger material spools in this machine without some kind of external spool holder, which is a little bit disappointing. Continuing on the trend of ease of use, Be Soft, Be Very Creative's very own slicing software, which you must use with the Be The First Plus. It's a good name because this slicer is, well, pretty soft. The features are extremely limited, I would compare them to the up slicing software, but even that gives you a little bit more control. You can't change temperatures, print speeds, or layer heights beyond some simple presets. You can change infill to any amount you like, however, as well as turn raft on or off and turn support material on and off. But there's no ability to preview your G-code within the BSoft software, although you can export it and preview it in another slicer like Simplify 3D. Speaking of Simplify 3D, it does offer support for the original Be The First, however I couldn't get the Be The First Plus, which is this new model, to connect. It appears it uses a different internal hardware and as such, uh, Simplify 3D can't identify it, it's looking for a COM port that isn't there, and therefore it can't connect. Be Very Creative sell an additional interface module called the B Connect, which as far as I can tell is a Raspberry Pi and a screen in a fancy case for an additional 150 euros. But honestly, the fact this machine doesn't come equipped with any sort of interface of any kind at its price point is fairly ludicrous. The nozzle height adjust is largely manual and done by stepping the bed closer and closer via software and testing with a piece of paper. I'm used to this kind of nozzle height setting through my experience with the UP 3D printers that use a similar system and it can become a little tedious moving it up slowly millimeter or fractions of a millimeter step by step via a computer. Leveling is done through adjustment of two spring loaded adjustment knobs and it does have a useful test print function which runs through automatically printing a outline of a rectangle to make sure you've got it dialed in. But luckily once you do go through all those steps, the machine seems to hold its level and nozzle height pretty well. So let's move on to printing. At the end of the day, this is what will make or break a 3D printer. And I found the overall experience of 3D printing on the Be The First Plus, well, disappointing. First is the fact we have to go through BeSoft and the software, while basic, does work. But once you go to transfer your G-code to the machine via USB, once again, the only way you can actually print without buying additional hardware, B 
be prepared to wait and wait and wait. Small prints like these cubes don't take very long to send, but try printing anything with a few thousand triangles like this organic model and be prepared to wait upwards of five minutes or even longer for the transfer to occur. Honestly, the transfer speeds don't seem any faster than a USB over serial in something like Repetia, and it's a huge inconvenience to have to wait for so long for a machine to even spool, let alone heat up and ensure your first layer is going down correctly. My first test print was the 3D Benchy, a tried and true torture test, although in my experience it isn't really that taxing on the 3D printer. It actually printed quite well, however there was a few areas of serious under extrusion. This is a theme that continued through my other prints. Next I tried my Maker's Muse torture test and while I did manage to print all the columns, yes I keep breaking them every time I handle it, the overhangs look great and overall this is actually a really good model. But once again, in this case especially, there is quite serious under extrusion issues influencing the final surface finish of the print. And this is printed at 0.1 millimeters. The 0.4 millimeter wall was also ignored, but that isn't too uncommon. But the biggest problem I have with this is I'm printing with their own filament using their own software, which offers zero options to tweak speeds, flow rates, or anything. So this is basically, you get what you get. I can't improve the, the finish of this model, and that's pretty frustrating. I did also try another brand of translucent red PLA, which jammed very early on because translucent PLAs tend to be a little bit stiffer than their opaque counterparts, and that prompted me to open up the top of the printer and investigate. Hmm, interesting. The PTFE filament guide travels on a tight spiral towards the extruder, which actually compresses it into a tight coil when the extruder is on one side of the printer. When Dion at the 3D printer got in touch with Be Very Creatives forwarding my concerns, they suggested that the new geared extruder design of the Be The First Plus was strong enough to pull the filament through this coil. Well, that's awesome guys, but I still had the issues. So I can't really see this machine printing wood PLAs or flexible PLAs all that successfully, even though it does say some brands supported on their product page. Another point of concern is the lack of a heated bed. Yes, you can print PLA without a heated bed, but the blue tape supplied just isn't good enough to stop material warping up, pulling the tape off with it half the time. And the big issue here is the fan shroud is so close to being level with the printer's nozzle that any warping causes a serious collision, which causes the printer to lose steps in dramatic fashion. And you end up with lots of coasters like this. The Warpinator print I printed looked pretty bad, almost like it was printed from ABS with the amount of warping that occurred. The first thing I would do if I owned this machine would be to chuck the blue tape that's included and stick some build tack onto the surface, which should greatly improve your first layer adhesion. I did also try my MakerCoin 3D print, which was the best of the lineup by far, but even this does have a few small extrusion errors, mostly at the start of each extrusion path. All of that said though, the Be The First Plus does have one feature which quite frankly is pretty damn cool. Let me demonstrate. Here I've got the printer chugging along, printing two cubes. So let's walk over to the printer and pull the power. Yep, did that make you cringe? It certainly made me cringe when I did it. Now any other printer you would do this to, any other printer I've tested to date, would that would be it. The print would be done, it would be irrecoverable but not in the case of the Be The First Plus, because through some kind of dark magic, this machine can recover from total power loss. Simply plug the power back in and through the software, hit resume. It will home itself down the bottom, not at the top where you'll get a collision, and it will continue where it left off. Now that's pretty freaking cool, and props to Be Very Creative for making something like this work. Just make sure you clear the pre-extrude that happens before it resumes, which I didn't do in this case. Conclusion time. The Be The First Plus produces decent prints in PLA, operates very quietly and has some interesting features making it a viable choice for educational markets. However, the print quality was not on par with the cost of the unit and the lack of a heated bed, automatic calibration functions or even an interface of any kind makes it extremely difficult to recommend with so many other machines on the market now offering these features for half the price. I also feel there should be some ability for advanced users to access more settings, as not being able to even attempt to correct the under extrusion issues was very frustrating. A big thanks to Dion over at the 3D printer for lending the Be The First Plus for me to review, and also providing loads of filament for me to test in future 3D printing projects. Head over to the3dprinter.com.au for a huge range of 3D printers, accessories, and filaments. So thanks for watching, let me know your thoughts on this machine in the comments. Does a closed system make a 3D printer easier to use or does it just make it more limited? I'd love to hear your thoughts. 
Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future 3D printing reviews, projects, or tips and tricks. And I'll see you next time here on Makers Muse. Catch you later. Actually, blocked in space.